Welcome back to New Day Northwest. When a crime happens, the voice of the victim is often silenced, even more so when the leads on that case turn cold. King Five is launching a new series on cold cases called Unsolved Northwest, and here to tell us more about it is anchor Madison Wade. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. We've been kind of chatting about this as you've been working on it, but as a society, why do you think we are drawn to these cold cases? I think a lot of people are drawn to cold cases, true crime, because it fascinates them. There's mm -hmm. no answer often. Yeah. And so people have their own theories. They come up with, oh, who, who may have done this and, and why may they have done that? And I think a lot of people are just fascinated by the, the why behind it and trying to understand some of these cases that have been solved. We're talking maybe, you know, Ted Bundy yeah. has connections mm -hmm. to the Seattle Tacoma area as well as the Green River Killer. Those are cases we know so much about. But the unsolved cases are the ones we don't know much about. And that's the part where we need to keep right. looking into so that the families can have answers. And journalism plays a big part in that. Tell us about Unsolved Northwest. Unsolved Northwest is going to be very victim focused. Mm -hmm. So we already have several cases that we've picked out from uh, different agencies in our area who really need help solving these cases. And we talked to the families. We also dug through the archives of King Five, which date back to before the 70s. Yeah. So we're able to pull archival video from our own coverage. You'll see Joyce Taylor in some of our stories from back then. Yeah, yeah, you'll see a lot of our journalists who have covered these cases for years yeah. and they're still unsolved to this day. So what is your first story about? Our first story tonight is mm -hmm. actually going to be about uh, this, the why behind we're doing this, um, mm -hmm. the problem here, how many unsolved cases are in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, wow. We decided not to focus on Washington specific. This is going to include parts of Oregon, mm -hmm. possibly parts of Canada too. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure it was Northwest as a whole. I appreciate that. Yeah, I not think it's so specific it's, for Seattle. It is. It's very inclusive because there are a lot of these cases. And as a as Northwest as a whole, we kind of are mm -hmm. all together. Uh, you've been interested in these unsolved cases for a long time. As a matter of fact, kind of the, the inspiration behind this series came from something you started during the pandemic, right? Yeah, during the pandemic, you know, when uh, creativity was something we really needed um, because our world changed. Yeah. I felt as a journalist, I really needed to do something unique and different where I could hone in on a, a certain topic and really help these families. Mm -hmm. So I, I was a journalist with our parent company in Sacramento and I did Unsolved California. Um, and so those cases, I did about more than 20 stories with wow. victims. Yeah, and it was really fulfilling. And I think I really helped a lot of these people navigate some of these cases and also just get some leads for these detectives. Right. Yeah, some of the stories I did actually did garner some, some leads. Really? Yeah. You should be yeah. really proud of that. I will say this, it's also, I think, for families to realize that they're not forgotten, yeah. that there's still someone out there that is trying to help. Right. How does that feel when these families are sitting here telling you, thanks for, for still caring? Right. It's the biggest honor to have their trust. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the most um, heartbreaking moments for them uh -huh. when they have to relive some of this trauma to share what happened to their loved one and to share what they know about it. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of these cases are so delicate and you have to be really careful about what you're sharing because it could hinder the case. It could uh, actually not help. Wow. So, you know, that's why we're really focusing on the victim here and telling their story. Who were they as a person before this happened? That is really important. You have mm -hmm. a very, very, you know, thin line to yeah. tiptoe around to make sure you're not hindering a police investigation, which is what I think a lot of people have complaints about when right. it comes to cold case reporting, but certainly not on the level that you're doing it. Yeah. There's a whole team involved in this Unsolved Northwest. As a group, how do you decide which case to take on? Yeah, so actually, since we've started to air the first series of the first episode of the series rather this morning we've been getting a lot of tips from people watching really yeah we already have about um, I think five at the last check Yay. that I saw from people just viewing unsolved Northwest this morning so we want more tips we think it's really important to mm -hmm. hear from you all because you know you're the ones living and breathing in these communities and know some of the cases that maybe we're not even aware of right um, but we already did handpick about five cases that we're working okay. on actively so the first one her name is Autumn Stone um, she was found dead in 2019 mm. in Green Lake. Um, the case is, is one of those that's complicated. Um, yes. Most cases are, but this one's very complicated. We talked to her mom, her dad, a private investigator that the family also hired. Right. And so we'll, we'll walk you through what happened and what we know in the case mm -hmm. um, and why it's still unsolved right now. And why we need to say, maybe share that information. Right. 
What is the biggest challenge when it comes to reporting on these stories, especially the ones that happened years and years ago? I think the biggest challenge is finding the people who are closest to the case, mm -hmm. whether it's a detective who's now retired, whether it's family members who have passed on. Yeah. Um, in my reporting, I've done a story where I only could talk to one person who knew them, mm -hmm. and we only had one photo of that person. You know, oh, So sometimes wow. we don't have much to go on, but it doesn't mean that their case doesn't matter. Yeah. We absolutely should be sharing. And maybe those are the cases that need the most coverage. Yeah. The ones that don't have coverage already. The ones that the voices have been silenced. Right. Thank you so much. When can people watch these stories? Yeah, so tonight we're going to have the first story airing at 6.30 on King 5. Okay. And then next week, the same time. So Thursday nights at 6.30 throughout the month of November. And this is a series that will continue and continue until you know, we, we hopefully start solving some of these cases. Oh, thank you so much yeah. for doing this. This is important journalism, thank and I can't you. wait to check it out. Thank you, Madison. Thank you.